on 2SM and the Super Network. High Tide. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go fishing down the river again. Up before the sun with a can of worms running with my friend. Scurrying down the river bank, taking our positions on the bridge, hoping for that red fin, one pound to put in Mama's fridge. Where the wobbler and the dragonfly knew us like they knew the river bend, but as sure as yabbies bite your toes. This boyhood story had to end. And a very good morning, everybody. Six minutes after four. Welcome to your Sunday. I hope you're doing well. The forecast for today, heading for a top of 19 degrees in Sydney, similar in Newcastle, 24 as you make your way up the coast towards Brisbane. The forecast for on the water, the enclosed Sydney waters forecast, looks this way. Northwesterly below 10 knots, de- uh, increasing to 15, 10 to 15 in the morning, then tending westerly around about 15 knots in the the early afternoon, then decreasing to 10 knots late in the evening. Seas below 0.5 of a metre and partly cloudy. Now, if you're thinking of heading offshore, Broken Bay to Port Hacking, uh, north westerly winds 15 to 20 knots, tending westerly 15 to 25 knots in the early afternoon. Seas 1 to 1.5 metres, increasing to 1.5 to 2 metres in the early evening. Then uh, the swell out of the south, about 0.5 of a metre, partly cloudy. You might I'll be sitting there at the moment thinking to yourself, hey, it's not that windy, it's not that bad. Kieran Riki, good morning to you. It is going to increase as the day goes on. Yeah, look, and keep in mind that you've still got that 40% variant there as well. Yep. So um, it could climb up over two metres and uh, it could stay down under a metre and a half. So who knows? But I do believe uh, Monday is going to be... A, a better day? Well, it depends which way you look at it. I mean, like, I've been watching the weather pretty heavily uh, for the last oh, week and a half, or even a little bit longer, uh, looking at this weekend and upcoming week. And it's changing by the day. It's the, even the models are, you know, having a rethink. So it, it tells you at the moment with this high pressure system over the top of us um, that, you know, it can be a little bit variable. And as you say, that 40% range is spot on. However, there is a, a southerly down in the Great Australian Bight that's making its way across. The Bureau of Meteorology is saying it's going to arrive here uh, sometime on Tuesday afternoon. So, and that's going to kick it up a little bit. <laughs> They're saying 25 to 35 knots on, on Tuesday, late in the afternoon. Charter boats won't be off. No. no they might sneak outside. out for an early one, but you'd want to be back oh, relatively early. Well, maybe if it's predicted, they can't. there's no insurance. Yeah. You yeah. can go, but, but there's nobody insured. Yeah, yeah. So um, we don't need any uh, bus situations, do we? No, 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 Just no. Don't take any chances. No, and that's the key, isn't it? Just don't take any. When in doubt, don't go out. Mm. That's really Pretty not simple. that, that go to the difficult. Fish market. Go to the <laughs> fish market, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might pay a little bit of a premium than you would on your bait, but hey, it's worth the effort, right? Yeah. What are the tides for today? The tides today at Fort Denison will have a high tide at 8.25 this morning. That'll be uh, 1.32 of a metre. Then we'll have a low at 13.49.63 of a metre. And then another high tonight at 8.28, 1.87 of a metre. So the morning tide is the, the is lower the, tide. The lower the high, tide. Higher tide at night. So low tide tomorrow is at eight thirty six, if my memory serves me correctly, which will be the perfect time to sail the Phoenix directly out the heads. Uh, do you reckon? High tide tomorrow. Yeah, high tide, eight thirty six. Yeah. Okay. Just pick up the start of the run out, off we go, and that should give us the run in tide going into Pipwater. That will be nice. Hmm. <laughs> With as many barnacles on the bottom of my well, boat as know, I've got, look, I'll take every if night. If you're a bit worried the wind drops off, you could always uh, 
how did you say, hitch a hike with a whale? Hitch a, yeah, well, there are going to be a few of those out. Gee, yeah, the, the so. reports even yesterday were just crazy about the amount of mm. whales out there. I was talking to people that spotted, uh, they were out for a couple of hours, they spotted on an average of about 30 an hour. <laughs> That's massive. Isn't it? I mean, and look, as a whale lover, um, and somebody who has dedicated a little bit of uh, my finances to Sea Shepherd over the years. It's awesome to see that. It's awesome to see those numbers uh, back because it was a, a time when we, we thought that they, they may not bounce back as quickly as and as well as what they have. Look, um, the ocean recuperates rather quickly. Mm. I remember when they said, okay, we'll take the commercial fishing out of Botany Bay and we were going to put in a um, a couple of artificial reefs and whatever and it'll take them 12, 18 months, maybe two years. Two or three months, the fish are congregated, mm. you know. And, and the oceans are so important. I mean, once upon a time, with regard to meteorology, once upon a time they'd look to the sky and look to where the, the jet streams were and all of those sorts of things. And while that still comes into play, it's now nowadays more about the ocean and the ocean currents and the water temperature that have a massive effect on our weather. And I'm not, I'm not talking climate change and stuff like that. I'm just talking day-to-day getting out onto the water and enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's not much I can add to that. You're being reserved today, are you? <laughs> yeah, well, there's not a great deal I can add to that. Yeah, but that is, you know, uh, science has come a long way. Yeah. Technology, we've learned a hell of a lot more than just looking at watching the clouds roll in and roll out. Mm. You know, where the farmers would see, oh, that's building and building, and that's going to be, you know, we should get rain. The crop should grow. Well, now they can go in and say, well, look, if we plant this month, within the next six months or four months or two months or whatever, we should have this amount of rain, which should help spur the, the seed and growth should take place. Yeah. That then, ooh, where did the floods come from? You know, they just pop up. Well, that the had, same as the bushfires. Yeah, I mean, well, we live in a country where we go through all those cycles, so you, you have to take that into account, don't you? Mm. That you're going to go through drought, you're going to go through floods, and somewhere along the line, you hope that there's a couple of temperate areas where you're going to get some crops to grow and, <laughs> you know, be able to make some cash if you're a farmer. I don't think enough emphasis was put on the fact of some of the poems that were written in the early times. Like yeah. When I went to school. Yeah. And in many respects, what you say is 100% correct. They're more news reports from the time. They, they work, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and uh, oh, okay, that's a poem. It, it Whereas, in, in fact, it was factual. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, but we were never sort of said, oh, you know, because the teachers didn't know. Yeah. To teach you and say, listen, you've got to take this on board. This is very, very important. Yeah. And they couldn't tell you that, look, don't worry about waiting to stand outside the red phone box, you know, uh, and have you change there to put in to ring up that you'll be able to just lay back in the lounge and uh, while you're flicking to change the channels on the coloured TV, let alone, you know, you'll be able to dial up people all over the world. Yeah. You know. Um, it's funny because all the rage at the moment is artificial intelligence. I just wish we could find some common intelligence for, for people rather than the computers. If we could yeah, work on that one, I think would be good. Usually you've got to get that from your leaders and... And with I would, that, I wouldn't say that we got that from the leaders of today. I wouldn't argue that. Now, those people that like to criticise the Weather Bureau and say, hey, look, there's a 40% range here. I mean, come on, surely if science has got that far, surely we can get the predictions a little bit more accurate. All I say is <laughs> grab a couple of synoptic charts, sit down, do a little bit of study on the internet and give it a go. See how you go. Yeah. See if you can match it with them. I'll guarantee so you, you Alan, can't. <laughs> Mr Blake would say... 
They can't get tomorrow right, but they can tell you the forecast for 12 months' time. And it, it's very true. It is the long-range weather forecasters that work at the BOM. My goodness, they nail it. They are very, very good. And quite often on their web page, uh, they'll put up the forecast, say, for spring and summer. And, okay, they can't tell you what day it's going to rain on, but they can tell you how much rain. And they're so accurate. It's The long-range weather forecast is brilliant. But it's, a, it's an imperfect science because it's nature, and nature has a great way of uh, <laughs> making up her own mind, right? Well, this is true. We'll take it's a... true. I've got to be careful how I answer that. Why? But the, uh, well, I could have said, you know, it could be one of either genders. You know, um, so sometimes the, term, the various nature. genders have a, a mindset that's a little different to what you would really want it to be. <laughs> we'll take a break here on High Tide. We'll come back. We'll give you some fish reports. Tell you where they're biting. Talking sport. So I managed to work out how to listen to you fellas when I was over, oh, over really? in Malaysia. So good to come back at 3 o'clock and listen to Tungsy's one-liners, Pappy pronouncing the names of all those boys that I couldn't even half get my tongue around, Graham explaining all the complicated rules in layman's terms, and then, of course, Robbo. <laughs> if Tigers don't win, he always takes his happy pills before he comes on. Weekdays from 3. I'll be saying, what on earth? Is the world coming to an Aussie in charge of Tottenham Hotspur? <laughs> and it's not any club. We are talking Tottenham, Tottenham. Hotspur. This is 2SM. So I got invited out to watch the State Origin. Mate, you wouldn't believe it. Now, I've been kicked out a few pubs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this bloke shut the pub down at 9.30. As soon as the game was over, he kicked everybody out. Absolutely <laughs> classic. Queensland are the biggest certainties to ever go around oh, in a uh, football okay. game next game. The biggest certainties yeah. in origin history. Biggest, biggest certainties in, in the region. Wow. Talking sport, weekdays from three. O-M-F. After the big game, every sports fan deserves to kick back and relax. And what better way to do that than with a mattress from OMF? Get ready to unwind in style with the ultimate in comfort and relaxation. So, what are you waiting for? Head on over to OMF and check out their game-changing range of mattresses. Shop online or at over 50 locations nationwide, 100% Australian designed and owned. O-M-F. Where comfort meets sport. The breakdown of a relationship can be a very stressful time. That is why it is important to choose the right lawyer. At Brighton's Lawyers, our expert team of family lawyers are committed to achieving the best outcome for you and your family. No matter what your time of need calls for, the family law team at Brighton's Lawyers are available. Contact our family law team today on 1800 848 848 or visit brightons.com.au. Brighton Slayers, we do support you in your family law matter. Polaris end of financial year deals are on now with great savings across the range. Get $1,000 free accessories on the two seat Ranger 570, the three seat Ranger Northstar, and the six seat Ranger Northstar Crew. Get 2,000 free accessories on the upgraded 23 Ranger Diesel and a whopping $3,000 free accessories on the Ranger XP1000. On top of that, finance is also available to approved purchases at a 6.99% rate. Don't miss out. See your local Polaris dealer. Polaris, think outside. Of hot, hot body you've ever seen. Rain comes on steady, hot and strong. It just keeps on and on. Install the rain. 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 Ask your plumber for Ream, Australia's number one. This is 2SM Sydney. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. 19 minutes after four here on High Tide. Kieran and I were just having a little bit of a chat during the break on a, a delicate subject, Mother Nature, referring to boats as she. Well, according to the Imperial War Museum, it's a tradition that uh, is to consider ships as female, referring to them as she, although it may sound strange, referring to an inanimate object as she. It's a a tradition which relates to the idea of a female figure such as a mother or a goddess guiding and protecting the ship and crew. So it's a positive thing, Kieran. The figurehead 
on the boat yeah. were always females. Yep, and generally goddesses, goddesses of the sea and and, and things like that. Yep, they guide them the way. Yeah, and there's still plenty of sailors around that still pay homage to <laughs> Neptune. I you know, to, I said to Grant there in the break. It's funny when you talk about old cars and things, and you say, the old girl. You know, I mean, Ross O'Brien will often leave, talk to yeah, in the endearing terms of his wife yeah. as the old girl. Yeah. You know? I mean, you know, you also got to take into account, yeah, sure, there are things that, you know, in a modern society we need to change and, and we evolve, not just as human beings, but with regard to the way we conduct ourselves too, but... By the same token, you look back at some of the great uh, presidents of the United States of America and things that they've said that I could no longer say on radio without being removed. Uh, just choices of wording for, for different people. Times change. Times change. You have to evolve with it. But things of the past... Well, you can't say what Graham Kennedy used to say. <laughs> you can't true. look like Benny Hill used to look. Yeah. Yeah, uh, remember Benny Hill didn't have to say much; just his looks. Imagine if, tell the story. Imagine if we went to Channel Seven today and said, "We've got this great idea for a TV show. It's called Love Thy Neighbour." You yeah. reckon how, how long? Yeah. Do you reckon, yeah. How how quickly yeah. do you reckon they'd throw you out yeah, the front the door? Nong that lives next yeah. door. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have gone there, but anyway, fish reports, mate. They are yesterday out on Pitwater. People were fishing left, right, and centre. Great to see so many dads out there with their their kids and and really enjoying the day. It was a gorgeous day, light wind, sun was shining all day, and they were getting good results too. Yeah, down Pitwater, there's plenty of salmon, Taylor. Mackerel beaches have been a good spot for the last couple of weeks. West Head, Barron, Jerry, anywhere around, up there, Macars Creek, around the back of Scotland Island, you know. Newport, just down there in front of Newport Arms Hotel. Yep. So that's good. Come along to Avalon. The, the wreck at Avalon is good. So uh, fishing at the moment, this is a... A really, really good time to be catching fish. And more jellyfish in pit water than I've seen in my entire life. Uh, I mean, they were almost to the point where you could walk from one side of the uh, river to the other. It was yeah, incredible. Yeah, we get an influx from various times, yeah. you know. Um, it's like when the red weed comes, you yeah. know, when the nor'easter swings around and bring, washes all this stuff up and then takes it all the way again and then... Then the sands come and the sands go, you know. Yeah. Sort of feels a bit like at the moment, uh, reports that I've seen in Botany Bay and um, up around Pitwater, if you if you can't go out and catch a flathead, you ought to... Who was it the other day? He said you should take up golf. <laughs> you know, because really, um, they're just jumping. They're everywhere at the moment. And good size ones as well. Well, I was looking in the fishing monthly at just some of the um, comp fishing comp catches of some of the big brim that they've been catching of late and some humongous fish there, you know? Yeah. The Seabees guys have uh, had an outstanding run the last couple of weeks too, too. Yeah, Ronnie Abdullah. Yeah. I brought the sausage oh, rolls Oh, did you bring the sausage morning, rolls? Awesome. Ronnie. We have brekkie. Yeah. So there they are here. So that should be good. Look, and that's another thing. If you uh, think about, I'd like to be involved and be out outdoors with the fishing. Uh, take my kids and the wife, and let's get involved. Well, don't forget, go to your local tackle store. I mean, tackle store, not to uh, a major because the major stores don't... Well, some of them do employ people that can give you the right advice, but if you go to your local bait and tackle store, they will ask you what you would like to fish for. They will recommend what you should do or where you should go and the type of gear. Then they're not going to sell you an outfit for a couple of thousand dollars. When they say, like, given the current climate with finances, um, they'll steer you in the right direction and say, look, this $50 uh, rod and reel here for the kids work. We'll catch fish. You're just going to use the right sort of bait or use the right sort of lures. Um, 
apart from what Greg Reed says, pro lures do work. But let me tell you, when I read some of the reports there on the rim that were caught, the crank a crab. Oh. And see, that's it. You build up a relationship uh, with your local uh, tackle shop owner or generally it's yeah. the owner in the in the shop and you know you might be going in and buying this one particular sinker or one particular style of hook or whatever and all of a sudden you know after a couple of visits you might say hey mate what are you chasing here blah blah oh no try this use this yeah get your fish on the plate well well this is it you know the new uh, the new prawn come out the obviously the pro lure prawn works it works very well yeah I um, mean let me tell you, PJ wouldn't be using them if they didn't work. Totally. Even if he might get them for free, but the thing is he wouldn't be using something for nothing if it didn't work. Well, of course. Why would you? Why yeah. would you? And why would yeah. you hand out good money over bad if if you're not getting the results? And yeah. they have been increasing their sales, so mm. and like dramatically, so <laughs> it's yeah. no doubt it so, works. It, it, you know, word of mouth says that it works. What about Sydney Harbour? Where, if we were going fishing today Sydney with the... Harbour, where would you go? You got that Wesley influence. I'd fish along Rose Bay, right through to Vaucluse, up the rivers, up Parramatta River, up the Lane Cove River. That'd all be good. Mm-hmm. You know, you could get up around uh, the Spit Bridge over there, Manly. You don't see too many people fishing in Rose Bay. Well, I haven't since I've been. There should be frequenting in there around about around the boats and then to the shallow waters and that. Mm. Yep, very good spot. A lot of shallow yeah. water there. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they're laying down in those shallows will be the flathead, as you hear from Ross O'Brien. You know, flathead everywhere. Mm. Now there's a nice little day out. Drive down to Kiama. No, that's a great day out. Great place to go visit. Yeah. And but, take your rod and reel and cast into the harbour. There you well, a bit of Wesley. You can fish around the pool. The well, ocean rather, pool there. rather than you tell us where you'd be fishing at Kayama, why don't we take a break? We'll grab Roscoe and what he can for? tell us. Why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> it is 27 after 4. He's in a mood. He's in a mood. Talk tonight with Gary Stewart. New South Wales politicians and senior bureaucrats will not be getting a pay rise for at least two years as legislation to freeze their pay is introduced to Parliament. I know they're doing it well, but they may have to have some rump steak instead of ice fillet steak. <laughs> yeah. Talk tonight has Sydney talking. Good to see these... Polly's closing the gap when it comes to salaries to the uh, the norm of the work across the state. With Gary Stewart. Katie Goldmine near Orange ordered to fix the dust pollution after heavy metals were found in locals' blood and in the water they drink. What happened to Hydro 2? That was a big disaster before they even started. That was a big disaster from the previous government, which uh, budget's blown way out. No, they should have listened to the locals. Gary Stewart, weeknights from 8pm. Good for the game tomorrow? Nah, still trying to sell the car. Oh, give me your phone, let me do it. Yeah, good luck. Car sales, instant offer. Car sales, what? Instant offer. You can skip creating an ad, dealing with buyers and waiting for a decent offer all weekend. Is that the offer for my car already? Yep. Now just take it to one of the official buyers nationwide, get it looked over, and the money drops the next business day. So I'll see you at the game then? Yeah, see you at the game. Car sales instant offer. The hassle-free way to sell your car. T's and C's apply. There's a conversation going on. It's a conversation that will never end. Radio 2SM is at the centre of it all. Connecting you to what really matters. To the issues you care about. To the debate you want to be part of. This is Radio 2SM. 
G'day, Dwayne Russell here. Business owners serious about finding good apprentices don't waste time posting job ads that don't work. MEGT's got real people who can help write a winning job ad and post it online for free. With offices in every state, MEGT finds great candidates no matter where you are. They also have an excellent team of mentors to help your workforce keep their eye on the ball. So visit MEGT.com.au today. They'll help you find the right key position players for your team. That's MEGT.com.au. For the management of pain and inflammation associated with osteo and other mild forms of arthritis, try Stiff Sore and Sorry Pain Relief Gel. Always read the label, use only as directed, and if symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Look for Stiff Sore and Sorry Pain Relief Gel at pharmacies and health food stores everywhere. To find the location of your nearest Stiff Sore and Sorry stockist, go to loveoilcollection.com.au or phone Ray on 040 66 71 359. 2SM has Sydney talking. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. And contrary to what uh, Mr Vidray said, hopefully it doesn't make you sick and you don't need your seasick pills. Certainly. By the way, what are you going to say? Uh, what did you think of his intro today? <laughs> He's a good bloke, Tony. I love listening to his show. He's good fun. Well, let's go down to Kayama. We can get a soccer report and a fish report. Good morning, Ross. How are you? Oh, mate. Jumping out of my skin. Jumping out of your skin. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of skin to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> How was your day yesterday? I'm real, mate. Yeah. The young fella went down by two to one, but... They had one goal, um, uh, what, what would you call it, not given. And uh, there was quite a, re- a revolting, just the way the women carried on about it. You know, you well, think they'll play for the World Cup. But well, it is, it. it is. When mums are watching their child. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, my little Johnny. He could, he kicked that goal, you know. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it, mate, over the years. Uh, oh yeah, the best one I've seen. One of my ex-wives. I can't remember which one, but um, the the rep the whistle the time was over and the whistle had been blown. The referee kept it going, and it looked like the other mob were going to score a try to win it. And two of the women run on the ground, so the ref had to stop it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, mate, playing for sheep space. A mm. couple of Karens down that way. Yeah, well, I didn't want to say that because I know a few people mm. that are married to Karens. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. Self-preservation. <laughs> Brendan's exactly. mother, you would be on the other side of the field and sometimes you want to be another field over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I and I... Uh, and it, she got worse when you, uh, when she went to barrack for the Swans. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. she knows all their names, and you know, on a loud hailer. But my, yeah. talk about soccer. My grandson got a treble yesterday. Yeah, Brendan's young bloke. Yeah, yeah. See, Construct see, right, see how it works. You say, yeah. Unfortunately. My my grandson went down to two one. Uh, oh, yeah, my, mine, mine scored mine. three goals. You see, you're on a flogging to nothing here. <laughs> fishing wise, what can we do today, fishing wise? Oh, heaps, mate, heaps. They're still there. Now look, this forecast: northwestward between twenty turn and westward twenty to twenty five in the early afternoon. Yep. So you're going to get a wave of fish this morning. It might be a tad sloppy, but um, on the northwesterly, you should be all right there. You get up under the, um, you might struggle a bit on the uh, northern side of Bass Point. You may have to come in around where the farm is there and um, have have a look at that. But uh, Norwesters normally don't worry you too much. They tend to just slip over your head. But um, just have a look at it. You know, wait till daylight and have a look. If you're going out in a smaller boat, definitely. Now, I heard you speak before about boats being named after women. Yeah. You know the reason, don't you? Do tell. They're the cantankerous. <laughs> they take all your money. 
Oh, we're, luck to we're you. trying to dig ourselves <laughs> out of a hole. Aren't you lucky, Sharon? Just <laughs> salute. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I wouldn't say it up there, my fool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're like, like, you're like Blakey. Dragon, so. Blakey has a lot to say about Anne, but yeah. he knows that she's not not out of slumberland yeah. until about seven or eight o'clock. So I'm in a different yeah. position, right? I wear the pants in our house when my partner's yeah. not home. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now I've got a good relationship with Sarah, and I said, you want me to make number four, or you have me stay at number three? <laughs> so, <that>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a business negotiation. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, it is. It's mind over matter. I don't mind. She don't matter. It's the other way around. So I'm a bit blessed. I've got a very, very good and understanding partner. So I'm... I'm... Is she listening, is she? No, no. She'd be fast asleep at the moment. But I said to her yesterday, I'm just going to go down to Pitwater and go out and sight my mooring. I'll be back in an hour. Five hours later, I came back. Not a word. Not a drama. Not not an issue. Yeah, yeah. Well, well Shad's a bit like that. I say I'm going for a ride in the galaxy, and it might take me a couple of hours to find my way home. She's good with it. And yeah. Speaking of the galaxy, mate. Oh, yesterday I went up uh, to the Suns in the galaxy, and um, he said we won't take it to the soccer because we're playing at that ground where there's no parking. You know. Yeah. And then anyway, when we got back, I said. Uh, he had to take one somewhere and the other one had to go to a birthday party. I said, oh, I'll head home. Mate, I dropped the roof down and it was one of the magni- most magnificent days. Yeah. It was warm. There was, the wing didn't come up till later. And uh, I drove all the way home with the roof down. I went down by the harbour and seen Steve in the fish market and asked a few of the boys what, what they were getting. It was just a beautiful day. Absolutely beautiful day. Enjoyed it immensely. And then mother come home from Sydney and I said, Oh, can I have some of that two hundred back? And she said, What two <laughs> hundred? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, even even out on Pitwater yesterday it was so good to see yeah. there are a lot oh. of people out there enjoying the day and one poor one poor guy, he went got down to his boat after not being down there for two months and the, the battery was flat and he couldn't get it started and he had all the kids there ready to go. So That's uh, easy. Put it in neutral and push it downhill. Give it a jump start. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a mate come down. I'd just come back into the dock. I was just about to uh, to get out and he had a mate come down and they had a canoe and they were going to row out. And I said, oh, <laughs> nah, I'll hop in the dinghy and I'll take you out. And they got it started and they all went out and had a great day fishing and uh, had a lot of fun, so it's it's nice, isn't it? Nice to have that community yeah. vibe. It's the same same down here. There wasn't a park left in the in the car park near the harbour. There was all all up the top was full of trailers. And this is winter, Ross. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Like yesterday, I couldn't believe how good it was. You know, I mean, we've had we've had a bit of a hide over the last few months, but it was just gorgeous. You know, now today I'd say we're going to get the same up until the early afternoon. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, mate, I'll say it again. There's more flatheads than a flattery. Yeah. It's there, Link. It's, I don't know. The other guys are calling flatheads too, aren't they? Absolutely. The Every, yeah. And good-sized ones everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No rubbish. No rubbish at all. But, um, the other thing they've been getting is a normal snapper, which, are, which have been a good size. And the Kingies, too. Um, I've got a nice photo of one of my ex-customers. Uh, caught a really nice Kingy up around Bass Point there. And uh, she was a good one, mate. It was, you wouldn't have to measure it, put it that way. It was a ripper. Yeah. And um, so they're out there. Um, and the guys going out wider are reporting odds and sods. Um, you know, they'll, they'll get a really good feed of snapper. Um and the guys going out further are playing their cards close to their chest, so they must have picked up something out there. Yeah. Um, Yellow fin, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, you're about right. You're about right, I think, Kieran, yeah. And don't um, forget, if you are thinking of heading out wide chasing uh, the fish that Ross are talking, is talking yeah. about later on this afternoon, 24 gusting 34. Five on the morning. Yeah, models. that's what I was about. Well, you shouldn't you be out, out there. there. The footy starts at four o'clock. No, no, exactly. 
Exactly, <laughs> as my Chinese mate would say. <laughs> exactly. But the fish are there. Um, I think most of the guys are getting them on, on um, squid, getting the bigger ones on squid, particularly the kingy, because they're getting them on squid as well, um, which is good because everyone's got a pack of a squid in their, in their box. Well, it's a good time of the year to catch a few squid. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, um, they're around. Um, but the fishing's just been going off. I mean, it just seems to be every time I, I go down there, there's blokes that got, you know, bucket full, uh, not bucket full, box full, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and there's a lot of, lot of slop left around the... Around the ramp, around the lamp, around the ramp, I'll get it white yet. And uh, there, there's uh, quite a lot of um, what you would you call the proof that there's been a lot of fish skewers, yeah, um, you know, scaled in that in that in that area. So um, uh, I just can't. It's still beyond me why we're getting so many flooded. There's got to be something coming. There's got to be something happening down there. I don't know what it is. But what would be your guess? What would be your guess? I reckon that I reckon that there's not the bigger fish aren't around on the beaches and stuff. You know, I know they're catching them. They're getting good um, snapper and brim of the night. Yeah, after, after late afternoon. Uh, early night and two hours before the run in, two hours after, um, they're getting good fish there. And I think that's what it is. I think a lot of the bigger fish are getting better tucker out, out wide. Yeah. And that gives you where the, the flathead aren't getting harassed like they used to. Yeah, less competition. Yeah, less competition. And I think they're getting a good feed and, and no one's attacking them. Mm. So that's the only thing I'm putting it down to. Um, having said that, a lot of the guys on the beaches are still getting good snapper and, and good brim, particularly up around Minamara, yeah. right on the entrance there. They're getting dang good feed out of there. And everywhere else they're throwing a line in, they're getting flathead. So there's something going on, and that's the only thing I, I've been racking my brain, and I think it didn't take too long. And then I, um, I think that's what it is. I think that the... The bigger species are getting a good feed outside um, and leaving the flathead alone. Yeah. If I was coming down the the south coast today and I was going to go fishing, what would you, where would you suggest that I go and what would you suggest that I target? You you want his opinion or my opinion? His opinion first. Right, yeah. Well, (laughs) if you cover the Kiama, I go straight for the. Behind the um, the rock wall um, near that flat area, Kieran, you know what I mean. Yeah, the pool, the other side, other side of the pool. Yeah, um, but I knew he's still, and that's why I wanted to go first. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that'll be the, that'll be the place to go. The other place would be up under the bit at the farm and the entrance of Minamara. So that sort of gives you three areas. Yeah. Bombo's working too, but um, it's a bit more open to the northwesterly than yeah. the other two places, you know. True. What do you reckon, Kira? I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah no, this, I think the pool will be a real good spot. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and of course, if you're... If you're in the situation as of today and you don't think you can cast out and find out exactly where that sandbar is, get a drone. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Pop in, grab a couple of uh, $20 lures and a a $4,000 drone. (laughs) Take your armchair, sit in the corner up there of the rocks, just at the pool. Make sure you don't fall in the pool. It'll be bloody cold. Well, yeah, no, it's 20 well, uh, degrees, isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. about 19. What is 20 degrees? I think yeah. there's always one thing about pools, you know, ocean pools. Yeah. We used to always look at them first before, and never want to jump in, never want to swim in of a night. Why? Yeah. After high tides, after the big tides, because you never know if the Noah's Ark was washed in there. Oh, you should be able to see them. <laughs> Not necessarily. No. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So some of them get pretty sandy and they'll lay on the bottom. I know when there's a, a really big south swell, a lot of people like jumping into that pool down there at Kiama and waiting for the waves to come over and just rock them about. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great entertainment to sit down there and watch them. Roscoe, we better hit the frog and toad, my friend. Thank you very much for your time this morning. You have a great week. Yes, you guys enjoy your week and get a line in the water, people. There's plenty around. There you go. That's great advice from Ross O'Brien. 15 minutes away from five. 2SM has Sydney talking. Wake up with Richard King. In your opinion, big business with price gouging is responsible for the inflation we're experiencing at the moment, Kevin. If all those people were just a little bit less greedy, how much better off would we be? Then from 9am, the king of talkback radio, John Laws. I think you're an idiot. You're a stubborn fool. <laughs> Right, okay. I just thought I'd give you something to think about. Okay, well, it has. It's uh, got me thinking about stubborn fools that make stupid statements, and you're one of them. Afternoons with Brent Bultitude. What he needs to do, though, I believe, as the Prime Minister, is own up and say, look, I can't deliver on this promise. Talking sports. Weekdays from three. Happy? I know, I'm just saying. We're not talking about a pup here. He's been around for donkey. Talk tonight with Gary Stewart. They've been screaming out for help here. State government's not listening. Neither is the local council. 2SM has Sydney talking. Oh, another day on the water. There's not much I love more than this. But you need to be prepared for your day out boating. As the skipper, you're ultimately responsible for your vessel and the safety of everyone on board. It's all about the three Ps. Plan your trip, make sure everything's in order with your vessel and safety equipment, prepare by checking out the weather conditions, and predict by being aware of common risks and being prepared for them. I mean, know your limits on the water. And always wear a life jacket to have a great day out. A message from the New South Wales Government. This is Bruno driving to the footy. Oh. And this is his cheap insurer reading the policy fine print. Clause 9D of your car insurance says you're not covered for thingamabobs. Thingamabobbed at claim time? Beware bargain insurance regret, Bruno. Choose Amy instead. Who pays out over 99% of motor claims? Amy does. Lucky. Acceptance rate for the 12 months up to 30 September 2022. Before buying insurance issued by Amy, read the TMD and PDS at amy.com.au and consider if it's right for you. All your favourite beauty products at the best price must be Chemist Warehouse. We have Aveeno Skin Relief Body Wash 1 litre, $14.49. Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hyaluronic Acid Nourishing Cream, $17.99. For dramatic eyes, get Maybelline Falsies Surreal Extensions Mascara, $27.99. And smell great with Davidoff Cool Water Oceanic Men's All Women's, $39.99. Chemist Warehouse, great savings every day. Peters of Kensington's Bridal Registry Service has been the first choice for couples for nearly 40 years. Peters offers an Australian ride registry service, not just for weddings, but for any occasion. With their legendary customer service, years of experience and huge range, finding that perfect gift for your big day couldn't be easier. Visit Peters of Kensington, 57 Anzac Parade, Kensington, or organise your registry online at petersofkensington.com.au. Why in the world would you shop anywhere else but Peters of Kensington? 2SM Sydney's Talking 2SM 1269 More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network Thanks to Shimano Tomorrow's Tackle Today If only I could go It is 12 minutes away from 5 At 5 we'll update the uh, Super Radio Network news for you at the moment Maruchidor 12 degrees heading for a top of 22 Malakuda is 13 degrees, heading for 14. Lismore, 6 to 22. Newcastle, 9 uh, to 19. And the Gold Coast, 11 to 22 degrees. Sounds pretty good, Bobby Dean. Good morning. How are we this morning? We are fighting fit. That's good, that's good. Kieran's a little bit quiet, though. I've got to be honest. I'm expecting him to fire up in a, in the next hour or so, and we'll all yeah, get into he's trouble. He's gone back in time, has he? <laughs> he's gone back in time. Yeah, 20 years. 20? Much younger. Oh, he's, he just put his headset back on now so he can hear oh, you. All right, yeah. <laughs> Say positive things now. Yeah, mate. No, it's, um, you think it's, you know, it's a bit chilly out here at Lola Park. It was even, when I checked, it was about four degrees and dropping. I checked at Crook, it was minus 4.2 and dropping. Ooh, that's harsh. And over, over on was 3.6, minus 3.6, so, you know. No, down here's lovely. <laughs> 
you know. Now, it's pretty sad when you're going to put your beer in the esky to stop it freezing. Yeah, true. And wind chill factor <laughs> of Oberon's a thing too. Oh, mate, I, yesterday morning here, I'd left a beer out that I hadn't opened from the afternoon before. I thought, I'd better put it in the fridge. I'm not picked it up and compared it to the ones in the fridge. It would bugger all different. <laughs> it's the only place on earth where you get a blizzard, snow and rain all in the one yeah, issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, talking about the higher country and that, um, the lakes down in the snowy, what, uh, you can be at 81. Oh, sorry, that was uh, Gindermine's at 81. You can be at 63. Tantagra is up to 29. So it's risen a couple of percent in the last two and a half weeks. That's good. Yeah, it'll be fishing really well. Mm. And people have got to remember the. Uh, Streams are now closed. Uh, I noticed fisheries put out on their website Macquarie River and parts of the Turon are open all year because of the natives. Uh, on the Macquarie, you're not allowed to fish any of the tributaries. They are closed. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, that's something for people. But at least you, know, you can go and chase your yellow belly and your cod and your trout in the Macquarie. Which, from what I understand, does fish quite well at times. Um, mate's son and his mates went down to bar and just they didn't do any good. They were going down chasing cod, but they they heard of two fish around the meter caught there. So, you know, this time of year the fishing's slow, but it's rewarding when you do get a fish. So, they go across to the coast. Some good reports of snapper on the south coast. Right. Yeah, you know, bend along in the places like that. So, you know, for the plastic chuckers and the boat drifters. Yep. Um, so, you know, and it did have to be the usual flooded on any other close in sand grounds at 30 to 40 metre mark. So, um, but yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of small tailor up around Lake Illawarra and the entrance in that 30 to 40 centimetre range. Our legal fish and tasty. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, sent me mate Louis, he's up at Stewart's at the moment, and he said the beach, he hasn't fished the beach, he's just been, you know, like glass. And he's just been you know, in the estuary there, he said it's been uh, basically dead. He's got one blackfish in the system there. But he's going to put his boat in and head down to the North Break Hall. See how he goes down there. Uh, you know, uh, offshore here, I just, you know, it's the usual snapper in it, you know, close off Sydney, and uh, a few reports of yellowfin coming out what, from out wide, grounds and beyond. So, the fish are starting to turn up again. Yeah, so it's, it's a good time of the year. It's just a bit cold, that's all. Oh, yeah. But if you dress accordingly, it's okay. Well, it's very mild coming in this morning. Yesterday was a beautiful day, so you just got to pick the day. It was nine o'clock. Uh, nine o'clock. It was nine degrees when you got here this morning. It didn't feel. I, I've got to say, it didn't feel that bad on the bike today. It did not feel that bad at all. I was quite quite comfortable for most of it. I felt fine by me, mate. Yeah, you didn't worry you being on the bike. No. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> you were there in spirit. Oh uh, yeah, well right. Yeah, I'd have the spirits in me. <laughs> As you but, do. Uh, nah, look, mate, uh, you can keep your motorcycles, mate. I was bad enough behind the wheel when I was a young bloke. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you I actually find that I I ride a lot calmer and less stressed when I'm on the bike than I do in a car, so uh, Yeah, well, I like bikes with a bit of noise, mate. At least I know they're there. Yes. Oh, yeah, you'll hear my... <laughs> you can hear, Actually, they can hear me from home when I'm in Newport leaving coals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I have a, a GT Falcon one. Like yeah. yeah. And on yeah. a bike, that's more about trying to get over the uh, doof-doof music in the car so people know you're there. Oh, uh, mate, yeah. I think that's a reflection on their brain cells. <laughs> Very doof, doof. So where would you head today? Hey, look, mate, you just, just got to get out there and go fishing, mate. Eh? Where would you go, Bobby? Anywhere. Literally anywhere. Anywhere along the coastline, 
uh, the thing is, the beaches will probably be fairly flat. That's the problem. Any of the estuary systems, mate. Right? Yeah. Um, go and get a few, yeah, pick up a few tube worms, go down, you know, Silver Beach or you know, anywhere of those places like that. You know, Grays Point in Port Aki. You know, you, you're going to catch fish. You're not going to catch hoops, but you'll catch fish. Take, take the kids out, mate. I was going to say to you, Bob, oh, I was going to run out of time in a second, but I was just sitting here listening to what you were saying, and I thought, you know, around about, uh, what have we got, uh, high tides at 8.30 or Perfect. thereof, just Port Hacking, just there along the sandbar there, it would be just nice sitting there this morning in the morning sun. Over at Main Bar. Yeah. Beautiful. Catch a lot of whiting there. Yeah. It would be a good spot to be. Yeah. Yeah. Bacon and egg roll, a cup of coffee, some good bait. Yep. Yeah. Favourite rod. Grab the kids. Have a beer as long as you've got a spare driver. True. Yeah. This is all you need. Yeah. Well, Bobby, you have a great week, and we'll look forward to catching up with you next week. I'll certainly catch you, gentlemen, next week. Again. Cheers. <laughs> Tight line. Hey, buddy. There he is, Bobby Dean, uh, with the fish report, and the, particularly the fresh water. He says, uh, while it's a bit slow, well, worth having a look because very rewarding when you get something. And you can't you can't whinge about that, Kizza. That's in some of the cold areas. That's yeah. All. I've never been as cold as when I went trout fishing <laughs> up at Oberon. I, that was... You want to you wanna be put off fishing? Go in the middle of winter to Oberon. Oh, no, yeah, I, well, no, I should no. be smarter than that. Yeah. But... I relied on friends. Yeah, I relied on a friend who took me there. I ended up with pneumonia. Yeah. Lenny Pascat, the thong. Oh. Took me there. That's why I said it was a blizzard and it snowed and it rained all in the one hour. Yeah. Laurie McAnally is going to join us in the next hour. We'll also catch up with PJ as well. We'll do a couple of on-water reports, but coming your way in the next hour.